friend Diana. So they're going to be helping us in the next four weeks with working with you guys. If you guys have any questions, please, by all means, please ask somebody, either me or one of them. If I'm busy working with somebody, you have a question on something, please grab them. They'll kind of help you. Oh, no, not kind of help you. They will help you. Okay. So um, for those who don't know me, my name is Jason. Uh, I've been doing this for about 30 years now, 20, 25, between 25 and 30 years. <laughs> I enjoy what I do. I have a motto. I say, I do this for the people and I love dogs. So I love people and I love animals. That said, I want you guys to have success. Okay. My biggest goal is for you guys to have success, not get people signed up for my class. So the first thing is dog training is not easy. Dog training takes a lot, a lot of work. I just worked with a gentleman this weekend. We have a seminar. Um, I, I learned a ton. So you'll never stop learning. One of the things that I deal with a lot of people when they come first class is they have these very high expectations. They feel that they come to the class, after the class their dog is just gonna be this amazing animal. It's not gonna happen. Okay, true dog training takes weeks, months, sometimes years. There's a lot of little factors that go into in how well your dog does. One, your consistency. Two, your, sometimes your dog's genetic makeup. If we have a dog that just doesn't really like to eat a whole lot and it's not really energetic, doesn't like toys, doesn't like food, it makes training very difficult because my training is based on positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement basically means we are using positive methods instead of negative methods. In other words, if we want to teach your dog to sit, we're going to teach the dog the mechanics of putting its own rear down, not pushing the dog into a position, okay? I never tell people to push their dog into a position because this does two things. One, it makes training not fun. Two, it actually puts strain on the dog's knees and can cause health problems. And three, your dog just doesn't like it. If every time I came up to my friend Christina, I said flowers and I ran over her foot, if I did that 10 times, the 11th time, what would she most likely do? Not let me run over her foot, right? She'd be moving away from me and she'd think, hey, this is not fun. I don't wanna let this guy near me, okay? So did everybody get an email from me? Okay, nobody, okay, sounds good. Sometimes I send them out, they don't get them. So if you notice one of the biggest things on the email I really tried to highlight was food reward, the type of food we use. So if you have the wrong kind of food, which I'll mention in a moment, please don't take what I'm gonna say personally, please don't take it to heart. Say, oh my gosh, he's looking at me. I don't expect you guys to know this. In fact, I expect you guys to know very little and here to learn, okay? So don't feel I'm talking about you. But the type of food we can use dictates how quick our animal can learn, okay? So I'm not a big fan of store-bought treats or using kibble for dog training. Unless your dog is extremely food-driven where it'll eat anything, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes you can get away with kibble. But I usually encourage people to use malleable food like hot dogs, cheese, something soft, something where the dog takes one bite and say, oh, I wanna do that again. So after tonight, ask yourself when you feed the dog, does the dog take more than three chews to get it through? Or is the dog doing like one or two bites and it says, I wanna do that again? And ask yourself, how engaged is my dog in me? In other words, how much does your dog wanna work with you? If your dog's not really excited about the food, they don't really wanna do a whole lot, Food is the one variable that we can change, okay? So I always usually recommend hot dogs, cheese. Um, they have these all uh, natural balance rolls that you can get from the store. That's what I think this young lady has. Can you hold those up for me? Uh, these come in actually a big sausage log and you basically just cut them up. Okay, hold on one second. Yep. Hi guys, how are you? Come on in. We are going to put you all the way down at the end. No, you're not too late. Come on, Shane. Come on, Shane. Help them with the collar, please. Yes, please. Um, the one that's probably the snap one there. Yep. Don't go down. This young lady's gonna hand you a different collar. Okay, perfect. Can you put this, or do you have one of these already? Oh, uh, no, we have one, but we actually have Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to borrow mine tonight, okay? Okay, perfect, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, sorry we didn't bring It's all good. Here, Christina, move, since nobody's sitting here, move that over a little bit, please. 
Like, yeah, so you can that dog there. We're gonna block you in a little bit, okay? Mom. There you go, okay. Now you guys can. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so the type of food we can use dictates how well the animal can do. Not just because it's one type of food more, more maybe more enticing or encouraging to the dog, but it's how fast the dog can get it down and say, I want to do it again, okay? So dog training is based on repetition, okay? It's based on teaching muscle memory. Muscle memory is anything that we do over a, a certain amount of times and, and people even learn muscle memory too. But dogs, if we can do, let's say we can do, we're gonna, tonight we're gonna work on four different things. So let's say one of the things we're gonna work on is down. If we can teach your dog to do at least 10 downs in a two minute time frame, your dog is gonna pick that up way quicker than if we do 10 downs in a 10 minute time frame. So if we are teaching your dog, if we're teaching your dog to do a down and your dog gets a treat and then takes a while to chew it up, then it, we can't repeat it again, okay? So if after tonight, if you feel that your dog is just really not excited about the food, I would encourage you to find something the dog is encouraged, okay? So up here on the board, I got a little ahead of myself. There's a board right here. It has everything that we're gonna probably, or not probably, we're gonna cover in the next four weeks. Each week we're gonna learn two to three new behaviors. The next week we're gonna go over those behaviors that we learned the previous week. And then we're gonna learn two to three new behaviors. So my goal is by the time you guys leave this class, you as a person have learned how to do at least eight to 10 new behaviors with your dog, okay? But I'm gonna say it again. Dog training takes weeks and months and sometimes years. You're not gonna get instant results. It's just not gonna happen, okay? There are some times where it clicks with the dog and the dog says, oh man, I kind of understand this, but true muscle memory takes repetitiveness and sometimes a long period of time, all right? So, it's okay, come on in. So the first class is usually always a little bit active. Imagine taking your dogs to Disneyland, or imagine, sorry, not your dogs. Imagine taking your kids to Disneyland and, and asking them to do a math test. Pretty difficult, right? They'd be like, oh, what's that, what's that, what's that? This is kind of like for your dogs. A lot of your dogs probably have not been in this kind of environment. So this is a brand new environment. So if your dog is a little bit barky or a little bit anxiety, don't feel bad. Don't, don't like, oh my gosh, my dog's the worst dog in class, okay? I'm not gonna kick you out of class. Now, I may talk about you, and I'm just joking. So don't feel bad, okay? All right, so let's, I'm gonna go over this again. So we have a board up here. We're gonna go over two to three new behaviors a week. And then next week, we're gonna revisit those. So tonight, we're gonna work on four different things. We are gonna talk about engagement. We're gonna talk about the release command. And we're gonna talk about sit, and then we're gonna, we're gonna talk about down. We're not gonna talk about what we're actually gonna do them, but first we're gonna talk about them. So let's talk about engagement. Anybody have any idea what the word engagement means when it comes to dog training? Eye contact? Okay, anything else? It just being engaged with what you're doing and watching you. Oh, I like it. She's, she always got it. So engagement, I consider engagement basically having the dog form a relationship with the dog. Okay, it's no good right now. If this young lady told her dog to do something right now and just told her once, most likely the dog wouldn't do it. Okay, the reason being is the dog is engaged with everything around it. That lab over there, the lab's really engaged with this crazy guy in his wheelchair. He really wants me to stay away. So if I come near him and mom and dad try to start telling him what to do, what's the chance of the dog doing it? Probably pretty slim, right? So we never want to put the dog in a situation where it's unfair to the animal, where the dog is not gonna be able to really, really do it, but we think maybe the dog should do it. 
we always want to start with everything we do with engagement okay so engagement is basically getting the dog in the mind frame of hey now we're ready to learn okay so we do this with a little bit of food if i walked up to this young man here what's your what's your grandson's name mason mason can i talk to mason sure. mason if i came up to you and started to hand you 20 dollars bills would you start following me around uh, okay what if i gave you 100 dollars bills uh, yeah. yeah okay if i asked you mason if I gave you a bunch of $100 bills and then I asked you to tap your head, would you be willing to tap your head? Yes. All right. And why would you want to tap your head? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> kids and dogs' brains work a lot alike. Okay? So it gave, if you notice, me giving him $100 bills got his mind working. His mind says, wait a minute. I want to do whatever he wants me to ask. Okay? So engagement when it comes to dog training is much the same way. I'm going to use my friend Christina here. Okay? So... I do a lot of role playing for a couple different reasons. One, try to bring a little light into the class. I know you guys are really nervous. Two, I don't bring my dog in to train and show off because two reasons. One, my dog probably is not really that well trained. And two, I train differently. I train differently than I teach you guys. Okay, I do things way differently. Obviously, I I can't be physical like you guys can. So, her, Christina, I are going to show you a little bit of what you're going to do in a minute. So, I'm Christina's dog. And Christina has a really high value of food. What do you got today? Hot dogs? What do you got? Um, chicken. All right, she got some chicken. So she went to the store, she got some chicken breasts, she baked them and cut them up in little pieces, and now she's got some chicken. So I'm her dog, and I'm really interested in this dog over here. Now, if she asked me to do something, what's the chance of me doing it? Yeah, hi, Mom. Hey, I'm checking out this dog over here. Yeah, Mom. Hey, hey, how you doing? Okay. So now, obviously, that's not working, right? So here's what she's going to do. She's going to come up. Hey, what you, hey mom, what you got? Oh, she's gonna start feeding me. Boom, 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 all right. And as she moves back, she feeds me, okay? Now when she stops, mom, where's the food at? Where's the food at, okay? Now what's happened to my brain? So my brain went from being an engaged to here, now my brain is engaged in mom. So now, more engaged I am with mom, now she can start asking me for behaviors, right? But before, when I was engaged with the other dog, there's no chance, right? Okay, so everything starts with engagement. What good is your dog if it's, if it's staring at something and you're trying to work with it, right? It's kind of like, you guys remember being in school and the teacher would say, eyes forward? Okay, we learned this in school. The reason being is, teacher realizes that if your eyes are forward and your brain's engaged with the teacher, you're more likely to focus on the lesson and learn. Dog training is much the same way. All right, does that make sense so far? If, I have, if you have any questions as we go along, please, please ask, okay? The other thing is, the next thing we're gonna learn, and we're gonna go over these two things in a moment, or you guys are gonna do these two things in a moment, we're gonna talk about the release command. Everything in dog training has a beginning and an end, okay? I'm gonna say it again. Everything in dog training has a beginning and an end. So if I ask my dog to do something, it's the beginning of a behavior. But there has to be an end to the behavior. If there's no end to the behavior, then the dog chooses when and when not to do things, and it chooses when those things are over, okay? Can I ask Mason another question? Of course. Mason, does your parents ever put you in timeout? Okay. If you got to choose how long timeout would be, how long would you choose? Zero seconds, okay? I love it when the kids are in my class because they help me prove points. So your dog is much the same way. If your dog got a choice to go play with this dog here or listen to you, what, what's most likely a dog to make? What choice is a dog gonna make? Yeah, yeah dog's gonna say, hey, I'd rather go play with them, right? Okay, so everything dog training has a beginning end. So we call this the release command or the free command. So this comes up with another, another interesting point. A lot of people ask me, well, what kind of verbiage should I use? Should I, should I use okay? Should I use free? Should I use a certain language? Honestly, it does not matter what verbiage you use. It matters what verbiage you pair to the behavior you're teaching the dog. I had a client years ago, they taught the dog uh, in colors. So when they told the dog red, the dog sat. When they said blue, the dog laid down. When they said green, the dog came, okay? As it didn't mean that the other person was any better. I teach my dog in German, okay? I do this for two different reasons. One, when I go to schools, and uh, I do demonstrations for schools with my dogs. Kids think, oh my gosh, that guy speaks German and he's a dog trainer. I don't really speak German. Uh, and two, it impresses ladies. That's the only reason I do it, okay? 
So, but what does matter is your consistency. So a, a good point is, this young lady's husband's not here tonight. So let's say she's tonight, she's gonna teach the dog to down. Okay, that's one thing we're gonna work on tonight. She's gonna teach the dog to down. If she goes home and her husband tells the dog, lay, lay, why are you laying? Why are we spending $150 on waste and training, okay? Is it the dog's fault or is it the wife's fault? No offense. The dog's. No, it's the wife's fault. Because <laughs> the wife did not go home and teach the husband exactly what to do. So this is really, 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 really important. Whatever you guys learn here, you must take home and teach to whoever is at your house. Whoever else is involved in the dog. So whether you have a partner at home, family member at home, kids at home, whatever the case is, everybody needs to be on the same page. It's kind of like teaching this young, this little boy over here, three plus three. If today his parents taught him three plus three equals six, but tomorrow it equals nine, next day it equals 12, is it the child's fault or the parent's fault? For parents. It's a parent's fault for not teaching the child correctly, okay? So consistency is the name of the game. Any questions on that so far? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with a little engagement. We're gonna start with free. So I'm gonna use my friend Christina here, okay? So we talk about engagement. Engagement is basically setting the mood, setting, getting the mind ready for training. So you're gonna, in a minute, you're gonna take out a little handful of food, okay? And you're just gonna try to feed the dog one at a time as you walk back. And I want you to talk to your dog. I want you to be a little goofy. Puppy, a on. good dog trainer is a, is a goofy dog trainer. Justin, okay, what on. you got? Okay, Let's okay. Go. Now she's almost out of food. Now to release me, there's two different ways you can release your dog, okay? You can basically, what Christina can do is she can throw her hands up and say free. Free! And then she feeds the dog and she checks out, okay? In other words, she can reload or she can go back for a seat or whatever the case is. But we're teaching the dog that the free means training's over. If that doesn't work, sometimes you can take a piece of food. I don't recommend it here because we've got quite a few dogs in here. But you can take the piece of food and toss it just a couple feet away. That way the dog kind of goes hunts for it a little bit, sniffs around, dog understands, okay, clearly training is done. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> I'll try to explain it better. I love your honesty. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break the class into, we're gonna break the class in half. So I'm gonna have you guys on this side of the room just stay still for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys, you three, I'm gonna have you guys do this behind your curtain there because your dog's gonna get a little bit worried about me, okay? So I want you guys to stand up a little bit, take a handful of food out, and I want you to see if you can get your dog to chase your hand a little bit. While you do this, feed him, talk to him a little bit, and then let's, let's say you have three or four pieces of food in your hand. On the fourth piece of food, free your dog, okay? Sure, so take out a little handful of food. Okay, I want you to feed, see if you can just eat and feed him right now. Oh, good, I want you to walk backwards right now. I want you to talk to him and feed him, okay? There you go, good. Good, the moment he starts to check out, I want you to encourage him to come back. Good, just like that. Good. Good, come this way, good job. She's a cool little dog. Thank you. Is she a Husky Shepherd mix? Um, she's a Shepherd mix. Wow. How old is she? Five months. Wow. She's gonna be pretty. Good job. Oh, let her sniff all she wants. Hi, honey. Good job. All right. I can tell. But I'll be honest with you. I think she's gonna come out faster than you realize. Gotcha. Good job. Okay, so Christine, can I use you for a minute? I got ahead of myself. Okay, so I, I apologize, I got ahead of myself. If your dog is really energetic like this dog here, here's how you're gonna feed the dog. Look at Christina's hand, okay? So you're gonna put a piece of food in the crest of your thumb, okay? And then you're gonna aim, put your fingers together, and you want the dog's nose right in the hole there, pushing against your hand. Okay, if, so if your dog bites your fingers a lot, do, like just put one piece of food at a time in there and the dog won't be able to do that. Basically, they'll do, just use their front teeth to try to dig it out of your hand a little bit, okay? If your dog's not really aggressive towards the food, then don't worry about it. But if you have difficulty feeding your dog, you can try that, okay? 
All right, I'm gonna have you guys stand up and let's let you guys try it. So do me a favor, try to walk backwards and feet at the same time. I know the dog's kind of kind of short and you're kind of tall. Good. Good job, buddy. Shake. Oh, it's okay. Shake. Where'd you guys get her from? I'm sorry? Where'd she come from? Uh, it's actually he. Oh, he, sorry. Oh. Job. What are you using for food? Biscuits and dogs. That's all we had. Gotcha, okay. So next week, pick yourself up a package of hot dogs. Get them up yeah. in nickel sized pieces. You'll yeah. see a huge difference, okay? All right. It's perfect. Thank you very much. No. Do what? Totally upset with biscuits. Well, here it's a little different. Yeah. This is kind of like Disneyland. You gotta do the speed. Yeah. yeah. Eat quickly. That's what so I'm you saying. want the dog to eat one, one or two chews and it be gone. Yeah. He took about six chews to get yeah. those down. One thing you can do is, yeah, break those in half and that'll make a big difference too. All right, you're welcome. Nicely done. Good job, buddy. Okay, let's sit back down. We're gonna show you the next thing. Good job, all right. All right, so we're gonna work on sit and down next, okay? So we're gonna start with down. Sit is pretty easy. Um, there is one thing I did not touch base on, I do apologize. One of the things, um, I do have a no sniffing policy that also goes for your dogs, okay? The reason being is not all, the, not, you don't know the dog next to you and why it's here. Maybe there's a dog that's a little bit uh, worried about other dogs or maybe there's a dog that just nah, needs to get around other dogs because he's not really good with other dogs, okay? So a lot of people say, Jason, I come to your class because I want to socialize my dog. Right now, your dogs are socializing, okay? They don't have to go sniff another dog. They don't have to go play with another dog to socializing. This is socializing. Plus, I would rather have your dog play with you and engage with you and have a better relationship with you than look at another dog and say, oh my gosh, I want to go play. Okay, this is one of the things I really don't like about dog parks. Um, I think a lot of times you bring your dog to a dog park and your dog goes plays with other dogs and that's all it looks forward through out the whole day. When you come home, is the dog thinking, oh man, I hope I do training, or is the dog thinking, man, I hope I go to the dog park, okay? So if you're currently bringing your dog to the dog park, something you can kind of ponder on a little bit, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about the down a little bit. So does anybody, have anybody taught their dog, or tried to teach the dog to down already? Okay, a couple people, okay. Have you tried to teach the dog to down without sitting first? Okay, you have, all right. So. This lady has been, has been doing correctly. One of the things that we do sometimes diff wrong, I don't wanna say wrong, but there's a better way to do it, is teach the dog to sit and then down. And the reason why most people do this is because it kinda of makes sense. If we divide the dog in half, if we get half the dog's body down, it's really simple to get the rest of the dog's body down. However, we're kinda of confusing the dog. We're teaching the dog that sit really means down instead of just down. So we're gonna teach you how to get your dog just to down. My friend Christina here. So you're gonna, act like, you're gonna have to imagine Christina and her imaginary dog here. So once her dog's really engaged, okay? So if your dog is not really focused on your hand or focused on food, I would not try this right away. You wanna start with a little bit of engagement. Once your dog is really engaged, then you can try this. So what Christina's gonna do, her dog is really engaged, okay? She's gonna take a knee with her dog. Okay. Food's gonna be in her right hand, okay? She's gonna direct the dog to go from the left to the right. What's gonna happen is your dog's gonna go underneath the leg, and when your dog gets to a certain point, she's gonna stop her hand, okay? We don't wanna push on the dog. We don't wanna try to physically manipulate the dog because the dog doesn't learn by physical manipulation, okay? We wanna wait till the dog offers the correct behavior. The moment her dog downs, then she's gonna drop the food, then she's gonna drop the food right between the front feet, and she may feed it a couple times. That very first time the dog does this, we want to throw the dog a party. You guys ever heard of that concept, throwing the dog a party? Okay, so throwing the dog a party is kind of like your, the equivalent of your boss coming up to you tomorrow and giving you $100 for no particular reason. What would you do if your boss did that? 
And most likely your, your brain would say, wait a minute, what did I do when I want to do that again, right? So if her dog is going underneath its leg and all of a sudden, boom, it drops down and she feeds it three or four cookies in a row, what's the dog gonna do next time? Dog's gonna say, man, I wanna try that again, okay? Yeah, not, don't drop the food all at one time. It's one piece of food, one piece of food, one piece of food. You don't have to do that, you don't have to do that every time the dog downs, but for the very first time, or any time the dog first learns something, you wanna throw the dog a party, okay? All right, so, now what happens if we have a dog that's kind of small like, like this dog here, okay? Christine, will you do a favor, grab a bar for me? So I'm gonna show you with, um, can I use your guys' dog in a minute? Sure. Okay, we're gonna use your dog in a moment. So let's say you have a, you have a really short dog and you're kind of tall, or this is another way if your dog doesn't understand the leg thing, Here's what you can do. A mom and dad who's gonna do this. Okay? Mom, here's what I want you to do. You're going to step over the bar. The dog is gonna be on that side, you're gonna be on this side, okay? I want you to take your hand with the food and put it underneath the bar. Okay, put it underneath the bar and slowly lead him this way and come to a stop and wait. Oh, we almost did it, good job. Okay, toss a piece of food. Toss a piece of food that way. Oh, this side. That way he goes on the other side. Let him run underneath, okay? A little bit lower, ladies. Okay, right there, mom. Okay, stop. Good job. Now, it's a little difficult for her dog because her dog's so short-legged that it can actually hold its butt up. So one of the things she wants them to do is make sure the dog's body completely drops before she rewards. Because if she rewards for the dog's butt still being up in the air, she's gonna mark or shape the wrong behavior. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see you guys try this. So go ahead. Most of your dogs are big beside these two. So let's see you guys try it with your knees and your legs. If not, then we'll try it with the bar, okay? And we'll come around to help you. Okay, then let's see how you do it. Okay, so not bad, but the dog still put its butt down. It still went butt first. Did you really? Here, watch. Uh, can Grandma do it for a moment? Can Grandma do it for a moment? Okay. Okay, do fair. Feed her and walk back. And then when I tell you, I want you to take the food and go right between his front feet. Okay? Okay, now put front front feet. And wait, good, and feed him for that. Then you don't have, that was really good. So that's how you should do it every time. Nope. Try to do it from a stand. You got it. Because what happens is like, later when you. Good. Good job, all right. Sure. Counting? Okay, yeah. let's see. And doesn't put her butt down, right? She just she kind of does a bow. Okay. I would I would try with your leg at least. Use your leg at least five times, and then the sixth time, don't use your leg and see if she offers it, okay? So go underneath your leg like five or six times, and then the seventh time, don't go underneath your leg and see if it helps with the pouncing. Part of it is she's just energetic. Oh my gosh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to wear her out. Good job, okay. But try to have her in a stand. So here, watch, drop a piece of food towards the wall right there. there. Toss it out. Okay, now put your put food on this side. There you go, and stop. Nice, okay. I would do that a couple times. Did it work? It worked? Okay, good job. How's it going over there? Got it? Nice. Okay. 
good job. Okay. Good. So yeah. if the dog offers it without your leg, then feed yeah, it for it, okay? Totally good. That's yeah. perfectly fine. Good yeah, job. Just do that on the other side. Just lay down right before it. And you've never taught him like this? Yeah. yeah. We, we taught him. We taught him sit and then wait. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. From this day forward, Shake. teach the down this way. Don't do sit and then down. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great. Idea. All right. How's it working? Yeah. We're getting there. Getting there. All right. <laughs> you can jump right over it. So I'm gonna make one comment. Okay. Um, you relied on your leash a lot to pull him back, right? Because he's so energetic. The more you do that with the leash, the more you're gonna have to rely on the leash. Right? It's better to try to do this without trying to pull the dog back. Let me show you. Um, do you have food with you? Let me show you. So, wait, wait, drop a piece of food, like, right here, and then quickly put your hand underneath your leg. Oh, sorry. Have a good handful of food. Try it again. <laughs> okay, try drop a piece of food right over here. As he's getting in, you have another piece of food ready. Okay, have your hand down, 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 stop. Don't move your hand. And there you go, and drop. So, don't rely on pulling the dog back until the dog drops. Keep your hand stationary. Even if it pushes into it, leave your hand locked right there. The moment it downs, then feed it. And you won't have to force it with the leash. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good job. How'd it go? Sorry. Good. How'd you do? Getting it? We'll talk about that in a moment. All right, good question though. Okay, let's sit back down. We're gonna discuss a little bit. Okay, so the question came up, when can we transfer it? Here, let's walk. Are you gonna put that back? Let's walk right over here. I don't want the big dog to knock you over. I'm gonna put it. That's perfectly fine. Good job. Okay, so the question comes up, when do we stop luring the dog down? Or when do we stop using the bar? This young lady brought it up. So, every dog is different. Sometimes you can get away from the leg very quickly and the dog, for, a dog understands it. Sometimes you have to use the leg or the bar or whatever you're using for maybe a couple days or maybe a week or two. When your hand drops down and the dog's body drops right away, then you can say, okay, now it's start, time to start getting away from the help, the, the bar or your leg. If the dog, when you put your hand down, still, still takes maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute to drop their body down, it's not quite ready for that, okay? So I would not rush that with him. If he's still trying to kind of hover, it's gonna be really difficult. Small dogs for downing is really difficult because of their legs, okay? Um, if your dog, you know, if your hand goes down, the dog offers the correct behavior, Without your leg, then throw it a party. That very first, the very first time the dog does it without that assistant, make sure you throw the dog party. Because sometimes the dog can think, well, wait a minute, I only down when the, I'm going into the leg. I'm only downing when I go underneath the bar. So the very first time the dog does it, make sure you throw the dog party. Can I use you for a minute, Christina? So, so one, one way to try. Oh, Ashley, can she borrow your dog for a minute? Can you have a handful of food? Christina's gonna demonstrate with this little dog here. What are we doing? You're gonna show them the down without the leg. This dog knows it already. So when you're ready to try it without the, the bar or the leg, this is how you do it. So she's gonna take and go, no, don't do a sit, please. Don't go from a sit, do it from down, okay? What she's gonna do is she's gonna take the food and go underneath between the dog's feet. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the dog's body to drop straight back. If your dog can do that, then you, uh, then you don't need the leg or the bar anymore. If your dog just keeps backing up instead of downing, it's not quite ready for that yet. Does that make sense? Good job. It's like, I like whatever is in your hand. So this is a really good, this is a really good example of engagement. This dog is super engaged with Christina. Good job. Did you see how she... 
Do you see how she did that though? Yeah. Okay. Did you see how she did? You, okay. I think your dog would probably even do that now without the leg. When when he went underneath the leg, he started to do it already. So maybe at home try that. Okay. Uh, oh, so that time was even better. Yeah. He started to drop his body before her hand actually even went to the ground. Good job, Christina. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. Okay, so let's talk about the sit for a moment. So the sit is pretty easy. Most most everybody realizes that if you're if you hold a piece of food above your dog's above your dog's head, the dog sits, right? So there's two things in the sit that you want that I like to work on. Use for Christine again. So one of the things I see a lot of people doing is when they do the sit, they'll take a piece of food, they'll walk into the dog, and they'll bring it over the dog's head. Stop. So what does the dog do? The dog rocks back and sits way back here, right? Personally, I don't want when I tell when I ask my dog to sit, I don't want my dog to sit three feet from me. I'd rather have my dog sit closer to me. Okay, so what Christina's gonna do, of course I'm engaged, or she engages me, so I'm engaged. She's gonna take the treats, hold it close to her body, and bring them up to her body and up, okay? So we want the dog's nose to come close and up into the body. Does that make sense? Here, grab the little demo dog, please. This is our little demo dog. Jolene. Best trained dog I've ever had. Okay. So watch what, we'll turn around in a moment so you guys can see. So watch what Christina's gonna do, okay? Her hands are here, she puts it right in front of the nose, and then she brings her hand into her body and wants to get the dog's nose to come up. But if she goes above and back over the dog's head, the dog is gonna back up to sit. Does that make sense? For you guys that have really short dogs, um, there's two things you can do. One, train them on your bed at home, okay, to do this, or get like get down on your, on your knees and just kind of do this on your knees, and it'll transfer, okay? Can you turn around so they can see, please? Sure. Thank you. So you would also notice how her hands are feeding the dog. Okay. All right, so let's see if you guys can try this. So start with a little engagement if your dog needs it. If your dog doesn't need it, if they're excited about the food, all right, then let's see you guys try this, okay? I think she's gonna overcome it really quickly. Most dogs would have gone like crazy over that. Really? As soon as like I have a woman, she realizes who they are. Yeah. Honestly, it's, so here's the thing. It's it's kind of a genetic thing. Her brain is wired differently. Like every dog here is a little bit different. Like that lab over there, he is extremely fearful from of me, right? She, yeah, she's not that big a deal. So. Um, I, I think you'll get over it, but one of the things that really encourage you when you bring her places, don't let everybody pet her. Your brain says, oh, I should let everybody pet her, right? But let's say somebody comes up and says, oh, I want to pet you, and she has a bad reaction, okay, then it sets you back, right? If she's able to walk by a hundred people and they completely ignore her, she's going to get stronger. Yeah. Okay. It's like, not interested. Not interested at all? He's probably a little full. Did you feed him this morning? Did you? Okay. Well, so he, he's not a big eater. Like he doesn't really, he doesn't even really eat that much kibble. Like he's not a big eater. Gotcha. Okay. So on training days, don't feed him. Like I, my dogs sometimes go. Like I don't feed them their meal be, that night before. If I'm gonna do training first thing in the morning, um, and I always withhold a meal before I do any training. So that'll help a little bit too. Okay. And change. Like try different treats. What are you using tonight? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Okay. You know, try some chicken. Like go cut up some chicken breast. I mean. Yeah. Dog small enough, you won't have need a whole lot of it, yeah. and try that. That might help too. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's fine. But what happens if you're holding groceries? Let's see. I'm not a big hand signal fan, just kind of for that reason. Okay. But it, once again, it's your dog. So if that's a. No, that you got a good point. <laughs> so you're gonna have to go back and reteach it a little bit. Okay. How's it going over there? Awesome. Nicely done. Good. One thing I think I encourage you to do is if he sits there, don't feed him right there. Hold it right to your belly. And make him like he just scooted forward like that. Like <laughs> your son's like, mommy's doing it. Okay. Good job. 
How's he doing? He's good. He's got sit pretty well now. Does he? All right. He'd be, he'd be able to do it without a biscuit. They do the same. Same with him. They're called sit. Oh, nice. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Good. How's he doing? How's she doing? I imagine she's got to sit down already, right? Yeah, she doesn't like to have posts and sit down. Okay, so one of the things that occurs you to do is if the dog sits that far away and you feed him, why should they ever move closer? Right? Yeah. So try that again, but this time if she sits far away, I want you to hold the tree right, okay, hold it down close to your body. Now slide, okay, wait, be right there. Hold on. Okay. Ah, there, she almost got close. Nice, there you go, good. But next time I hold it right between you, like, like right in front of you there. Yep, there you go. So she doesn't learn to sit on one side. So he's really annoying about the food. When you go to feed him, he grabs it, right? Yeah. Okay, can I show you something? Yeah. Um, pull out a bunch of little pieces. What do you use for treats? Okay. I'd curd something like either small or malleable, something that takes one chew, that'll make it okay. So, how many do you have in your hand? Let's break those in half. I, I like her. I love the energy. Here's what I'm gonna do. I want you, you're gonna, how many do you have in your hand now? Okay. You're gonna feed her three in a certain way. So when you feed her, I want, I want you to push the food like kind of hard into her mouth. Almost like you're giving her a pill. Okay? Almost like, you're not, I'm, I'm not asking you to hurt her, but I just want you to almost like, like push it down the throat. Okay? Okay? You got to be a little aggressive about it. Okay? Actually, don't, for this, don't make her sit. Just let her, let her hang out. Push, push. She's so loud. Try it again. Or, here, there we go. Try it again. Push. Push. Okay, take another one out. Oh, she got all four? I want to feed her one at a time. Okay, ready? Push. Good, again. Okay, but you need to have a bunch in your hand at once. By the time you go in your pocket, it, clo it kills our learning curve. I want to feed, 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 feed that fast. Okay, push. Okay, one at a time. She does, she gets lost. One at a time, push. Okay, take your hand away. Okay, push now. Push, push. Good, take your hand away. Okay. I apologize, I'm not explaining very well. I want you to feed her one, take her hand away. Feed her another one, take her hand away. So each time it's like a new tree coming. I apologize, I should have explained it better. So you, okay, here. When she does that, ignore it. Don't tell her to stop. By you telling her to stop, is acknowledge it. Now feed her. Okay. There you go. Another one. Push. Good. Push. Okay, now feed her one normally, like wait, like you normally do. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. So you just have to be consistent with that. So like go home and do like 10, 15 treats and really push it into her. Really push it into her. The 16 treats just add it to her normal. And she'll start learning. She doesn't need to take her fingers off. Okay? When she jumps up like this, don't say stop. Just ignore it. When she chooses to not to jump up, then feed her for it. Right now, she gets rewarded inadvertently by jumping up on you. Because you say stop. It's like an acknowledging, right? It's kind of like you have kids. Okay, so if you ever have kids, you have kids, mom, 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 right? And you acknowledge every time they say mom. Well, you're teaching them a behavior. They can get, a, they can get your attention by saying mom. So every time she jumps up on you, say stop. You're basically telling her, oh, that's what you want. When she jumps up on you, completely ignore her. When she offers you the correct behavior by not jumping up, then you feed her. I don't know that with other people. Like, she's you actually don't. usually pretty good you about not jumping on me, but how, it's mostly... How old is she? Yeah. Okay, so one of the things we are working on is jumping up, but this is different. This is not necessarily jumping up on you. This is being rude and wanting the treat to come quicker, okay? Jumping up on people is another thing, but we will work on that. Okay, good job. All right. Okay, any questions on what we covered so far? Because there's going to be a quiz next week. I'm joking. Any questions? So we covered engagement, okay? And getting the dog's mind to engage. Have you guys noticed something already? One, your dogs are way quieter, okay? 
Two, I see most of your dogs looking at like, hey, let's do something exciting. Like this little dog over here, oh my gosh. <laughs> I guarantee when they're gonna go home, that dog's gonna follow them everywhere, okay? And then we worked on the release. Release is teaching the dog to free from a certain behavior, okay? Then we worked on sit, and then we worked on down. So in the down, we're teaching the dog to do a down without sitting first, okay? And then the sit, basically is pretty self-explanatory. Dog's butt goes down, we reward the dog. But we're trying to get the dog to sit a little bit closer, okay? Any questions on that? One thing, I, how many times should we... Uh, we took him to, I took him to training where he stayed and he said to only tell him one time. Ah, that's, not move. So what do you take on that? That's a really good point. So <coughs> it, it's sometimes hard to say, okay, can we tell the dog multiple times? I would say no, her, her training is correct. No, you shouldn't say it over and over and over again. However, sometimes when they're in an environment, let's say we're in a really active environment like this, we have to say, okay, did, did the dog hear me or was the dog's brain engaged with me? Okay, sometimes we have to give the dog a second chance. Now, if by the second chance, obviously the dog's not doing the behavior, it means the muscle memory is not anchored enough or the dog doesn't firmly understand it enough that we need to go back and teach it. Either that, or I get this a lot of times, my dog is perfect at home, okay? Well, most of our dogs are perfect at home because the reason being is our home is a neutral environment. This is actually a counterintuitive environment for your dog. It's not necessarily a good thing to take your dog into an environment with a lot of other dogs, smells, things like that, and ask them to do new behaviors. So this is why my training is based for you, not your dog. In fact, there's been classes I've had where people have come to my classes and their dog has not done anything during class. Either the dog is scared, either the dog just it, it does not want to eat, there's no engagement, that's fine. As long as you guys can take it home and transfer this at home in your neutral environment, that's what I care about more than anything else. So if we're in a new environment and you ask the dog to sit, okay, ask yourself, is there a lot going on? Am I putting my dog in a failing situation if I keep asking him to sit too many times? Or did my dog not hear me? But yes, you're right. We only want to tell the dog once if we can. Okay, very good question. Any other questions? Yeah, how long should they train that? That is a really good question too. So every dog is a little bit different. Sometimes we have to tailor our training sessions and the length of our training session based on the dog's age. Um, so this dog here, this dog here is four years old, has tons of food drive. This dog, I can almost guarantee, can work probably a good 10, 15 minutes a couple times a day. This dog here, I would say, it's, it's training needs to be tailored uh, maybe five minutes, two or three times a day, very, very short sessions. I would rather have my dog be really engaged for 10 minutes and do a good 10 minute session than try to push the dog and do a 20 or 30 minute session. Because after 20 or 30 minutes, the dog's gonna be like, uh, I don't wanna do this anymore. Watch this. If you had to go to school tomorrow for 12 hours, would you wanna go? No, okay. But what if, what if there was a huge, what if you got to take five recesses? Yes. All right, so by me asking about the recesses, I changed the way his brain thought about work. His brain first thought about, oh my gosh, 12 hours of work. But then again, when I said, hey, if I give you some engagement with recesses, then he says, wow, I don't mind doing a little bit more work, okay? Your dog is in much the same way. However, we always want to end the dog on a good note. We don't want to overdo our training where our dog is like, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. Training and playing should be two in the same. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Training and playing should be two of the same. If you're not having fun training your dog, in other words, you're having to tell your dog 10, 15 times, or your dog is really pissing you off and, and you're just getting upset at your dog, okay, and you're not having fun, obviously training is not going anywhere. You either need to find a new way, find a better engagement, or find a better teacher, okay? So it's based on engagement, based on age, there's a lot of little factors that go into it. A good rule of thumb, if you just don't know, a good rule of thumb is probably twice a day for no more than five or 10 minutes. I have a routine, I don't do this for a full-time living. I have two other jobs, I do this because I enjoy people and dogs. Um, first thing in the morning when I get up at 6 a.m., um, I have usually three slices of cheese. Uh, I use string cheese or I have three hot dogs. And once those are done, I'm done training. The reason being is I'm very ambitious. I love to compete. I really, really want to push my dog. It's one of my hard, one of my bad habits, okay? 
So if I say, if I go through three pieces of string cheese or hot dogs, and then the training's done, then I'm holding myself accountable, and then I'm not overdoing my dog. So if you think, oh man, I really want to get my dog trained, put yourself some, like use a, use a cup of food, and after that cup of food's gone, boom, then you're done training. Then it may be lunchtime, or when you come home from work in the evening, then you can do it. Don't feel that if you don't work with your dog for an hour a day, your dog is gonna resent training or you're not doing a very good job. It's not about the length of training, it's about the, how clear the picture is to your dog. Make sense so far? Okay, any questions? So, I'm jabbing a lot in your brain. Okay, I'm trying to take four weeks and turn you guys into mini dog trainers. I don't expect you guys to get this, okay? So if you have any questions after class, I'd really encourage you to stay in your seat. I'll come around and ask if ask it or talk to you. You can ask me anything you want. If there's something going at home that you're like, hey, I just need to know how to handle this, I'll come and help you. Um, I also record all of my lessons. I put them on YouTube and my Facebook page. So that way you guys can go back, uh, watch yourself, re-listen to it again. That way if you missed anything, kind of go over things. I really want you guys to have success, okay? All right, so when you leave here, please don't leave all at once. Leave in an orderly fashion. Make sure there's no sniffing, and you guys did really good, and I will see you next week, okay? All right, you're dismissed. You're free, yes.